What is up, everybody? Welcome to the Love Unscripted Podcast. I'm your host, Joseph Wilson, and this is the podcast where we have unscripted conversations with millennials about relationships and dating. So I hope you all are ready and primed for this new 2023 year. Hopefully you've already got some of your goals, uh, some of your uh, stop doing lists and start doing lists already planned out. And hopefully, just maybe this can be the year where you give love a chance, where your relationship takes a turn for the better, or you even take your relationship from good to great. So wherever you're at in this relationship love journey, I just want to commend you for getting to 2023. A lot of people have, as we've seen, have given up on this thing called love. But one thing that we know is that although we may have negative experiences For a chapter, that does not have to be the entirety of our story and that we all can find love at some point in this journey. If we look inside first and then do our due diligence with trying to find a good partner or even making our current relationships better. So as you heard last week, we kind of wrapped up uh, the year with a conversation about real relationship goals. Now, we've all heard about all these celebrity couples who have gotten a divorce or broken up and parted ways, but we decided to come up with something last year that was kind of our theme and our mantra for the new year, which was real relationship goals, goals that we focus on that help us be better internally so that we can show up as our authentic and truest self in our relationship. So if you need a recap on that, if you need a refresher on what these real relationship goals are, go ahead, pause this episode. I'm not going to be upset. Go listen to that one and then jump back into this episode ASAP. Another thing that I want to let you all know, y'all been hearing about the build up to our relationship community and it is officially launching today. So if you're on Monday, you're listening to this love Wake, excuse me, Wake Up in Love is officially open. We have our first meeting this morning. So go ahead. And if you haven't already, if you're looking for a community where you can have access to licensed therapists, certified relationship coach, coaches on a daily basis, go ahead and join the Wake Up in Love group. It's www.wakeupandlove and see what can happen. See what happens when you get support from trained professionals, and you have support and accountability from people who value relationships the same way you do. Just see what happens. Right now, we're giving a 14-day free trial, so you can try it out for two weeks, see how it goes. And if it's not for you, it's not for you. But if it is the kind of community you're looking for, we hope you would join us throughout this year so that we can all grow. I know I'm going to be taking notes. I don't claim to be the end-all, be-all, know-it-all when it comes to relationships. So go ahead and join us for that for those type of conversations. But let's go ahead and jump off this new year. This is season 11. We've been doing this a long while. And one thing we love to do is have conversations. The reason why we try to have conversations is because nobody likes to really be lectured to on a consistent basis, especially about relationships. But one thing that I've seen over my, my over my many years is that having conversations about things we care about actually allows us to get different perspectives and hear other people's point of view on the same situation that we may be currently going through, or we're able to support somebody in a challenge that they are currently in that we've been able to overcome. So this episode is no different. I have a amazing guest. I'm super excited. Let me go ahead and get them in here. All right. So go ahead, sir. Introduce yourself. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Uh, First and foremost, thank you for having me on the platform. I'm honored and grateful to be here. Um, My name is Nate Evans Jr. I am my husband. Uh, By the time this, I guess, fully comes out, I could be a father. We're expecting, uh, yeah, any day now. So that could be happening. Um, (laughs) um, I'm also a uh, international uh, motivational speaker working with students, athletes, um, corporate owners and things like that. I'm an author. Um, I'm a mentor and a mental health advocate um, of many things. Um, But first and foremost, I'm just somebody who loves people, who loves people and is always looking to add value to people in the best way that I can. Um, I truly believe that my gifts will make room for me. So I wake up every day with that being on my mind. And that's how I operate and live. 
Mm, I love it. I love it. And so I'm going to ask you a couple questions to help the audience get to know you a little bit better. So Absolutely. as someone who helps people often and giving your time, energy and effort to people, what is something you like to do when you need to just kick back, relax and just enjoy yourself? What are some things you enjoy doing? Yeah, um, something that I love to do. Um, I'm actually about to do it in a little bit is um, I love watching like comedy movies, comedy movies, stand up. Uh, me and my wife loved it. We actually, she actually took me to see Dave Chappelle a few months ago. Um, and I love to just laugh. It's one of those things where I feel like life got really serious for most of us, especially me as a business owner. So I got really serious and I realized that I wasn't enjoying life as much. So every little opportunity I get, I try to find some type of laughter in that place. So I like to get down. We watch a bunch of different movies. We watch a bunch of different Christmas movies. Um, but that's one of my big things. I even have a YouTube playlist curated for this specifically of just like, I, and the playlist is called A Good Laugh. And it's just videos I put on there. And I just like to get myself in that spirit of smiling, of laughing, of enjoying this thing we call life. So I would say that that's probably the main thing I do outside of that um you know working out i love to work out um getting back into playing ball again so those are like my things that really um really lift me up you know what i mean oh i feel you like i wish i could get back out there and play ball but oh, the way yeah. my knees and my ankles are kind of set up mm. i don't know if i could get out there like you know the heart is willing but the, the but the body may be weak like yeah, i can't sure. get out there with them 20 something year olds like i used to and try to like Windmill it like I can't do that. Like right. Father Time is undefeated, and right. I know what my time is. I'm humble yeah. enough. <laughs> I had I, I, hey, look, man. I had to get humble last year. I um, you know, I didn't play ball in probably like two, three years, and they called Nate, come out to the league, come play. It's this league on the island. I said, cool, I'm gonna come play. I do about two games. I'm like, mm, okay, I feel like riding a bike. The third game, I come, I rush to the game. I don't stretch, do nothing. Tell me why I find out I rupture my Achilles. Out for a year. <laughs> my I said, goodness. I said, the body ain't the same no more. It felt like my brain was telling me to do certain stuff. My body said, no, sir. Right. No, sir. You, you know what's kind of crazy? They There was some a research article that came out about two years ago that said the most common injury for men over the age of 30 is rupturing their Achilles or tearing the ACL. And guess what it's all from? recreational sports this isn't including the nfl players the, the nba players this is me and you getting out there trying to still yell kobe and hurting ourselves like we, uh, we gotta go to work the next day like, uh, we, got, we gotta do better we, we gotta do better that's that's and, crazy and i always tell people we don't have the division one the nba type training staff to rehabilitate us Oh. The people, the people at Stars Physical Fitness aren't the ones that are going to be at home fixing meals, rubbing us down every three oh, to four hours. Oh. Like we don't get that treatment, unfortunately. No, sir. It was an ugly recovery for me. I was sitting in the house depressed, ordering Chinese food and stressed out, gaining weight, trying to figure out how I'm gonna get up the steps to take a bath. <laughs> like, oh man, I, I feel you on that. So my next question: When you hear the word love, what comes mm -hmm. to mind? Wow. Wow. That's um, that's a, such a great question, man. I um, so many things come to mind. Um, the first thing that comes to mind is unconditional. Right. Um, growing up and the way that I grew up, the love that I received, it was it was very uh, performative, very transactional. You know what I mean? Um, now that I'm much more mature, I've healed, I've forgiven people, I've grown, I've developed. Um, you know, I've walked deep into my spirituality. It's like, yo, it's, it's really an unconditional thing, right? I'm even thinking about when my son comes into the world, I'm like, yo, it's nothing he has to do ever for me to love him. Maybe he might upset me here, frustrate me a little bit here, but to love him, it's unconditional, man. So that, that's the first thing that comes to mind is just that unconditional, that agape style love. Um, the next thing that comes to mind is um, this acronym that I created for love, which is listen, open heart, validate, encourage. And that's actually a method that I use to connect with the younger generation. Let's just say Gen Z. Um, and to really pour into them, it's like, listen, when was the last time, you know, somebody actually listened to you? We, we go to people all the time, like, hey, man, what's going on? And it's like, you're just moving, right? 
love people enough to listen, love people enough to have an open heart to what they want to share, to what they're going through without judgment, love people enough to validate them, you know, validate the things that are also that they may be going through. You know, your feelings are real. The challenges are real. The anxieties are real. Right. But then also love them enough to encourage them in that process. So those are the things that come to mind almost immediately when I think of of love, which is so. It's, so, it's one of those things where I don't know if we even understand love. <laughs> it's so complex, so complex, but we all need it. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Absolutely. And I just I just encourage people to really think about it. Mm. Think about it, because the word gets thrown around so loosely now, but it has such a heavy impact. Heavy. And, and it has the opportunity to be very healing, supportive, mm -hmm. encouraging, and life changing. Right. So I just like, I think that's a question I'm going to start asking people. Like, what do you think of when you hear the term love? Because not everybody, I think everyone has different uh, experiences with love. And it's just, and it's going to like show how complex it is. Right. And how how much people identify with it, need it, and use it in everyday life. So that's a little bit about our get. Oh, did you want to say something else? Uh, now I was thinking of something. Um, when you just said that, I was thinking like all of our actions are motivated by love, or either it's either the receiving of love or the lack thereof. But everything we do is motivated by some level of love, all the way down to how we, you know, look to provide for our families and things like that. It's Everything comes from. I didn't even think of that until you just said it. Like, wow, everything is motivated by love. That's wow. Yeah, that was just a thought that popped up, man. I'm, wow. No, that's 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 real. Like, you're either moving out of a lack of it or mm. from it. Mm. Those two places. Oh, we gonna have to unpack that at yeah. another time. Ooh. But something we're gonna go ahead and jump into our conversation for today. And the reason I had you on is because, like, I've watched you over the years. And I hear the content you put out and I am encouraged and motivated every time I hear you talk as someone who also worked with youth and did youth speaking for a while. I really identify with the need to be motivated. Mm -hmm. And as we're going into this new year, we're going into 2023. By the time they hear this, it will be in 2023. Why is it important? to have some level or have some form of motivation to start moving into a new year or to try to get a fresh start in something. Yeah. It's, it's super important to, to develop and find that, that daily motivation because again, it's a daily thing to have um, because the worst thing you can do is, is waste the time that, that you have here. I tell people all the time that God doesn't owe us more time. The fact that we're even still here is saying something about you. It's saying that he has a purpose for you. He has something greater for you, for you to accomplish, for you to be a part of. And a lot of times we kind of just mosey through life. You know, you just live another day. I'll see y'all next week. And it's just like, who told you that? You know, you need to find that motivation to realize like, hey, every day you're getting a little bit closer to that expiration date. And here's the other thing, too. Something that you're called to, something that you're supposed to be building, something that you're supposed to be doing is connected to somebody else. And they may miss out on that blessing if you're going to continue to be stagnant, if you're going to continue to not be motivated, if you're going to continue to be um, just in that depressive mode. And it's unfair to them. Right. We're here for somebody else. We're not here just for ourselves. So I want people to adopt that mindset to realize like, oh, my actions are bigger than me. You know, me staying from place and oh, that this is actually hurting more than just me. Because I'm supposed to be doing something greater and more with my life. And it doesn't have to be this big, vast thing. But again, we're all connected to somebody in some type of way. And people need what we're building and people need the version of us that we're going to become. It's super, super huge. So my hope is that people would just get that motivation. Right. And it doesn't mean you're going to be motivated every day. You're going to have your days when you fall off, but just get back up. Stay consistent. Stay consistent. Every time you get knocked back down, show yourself some grace, get back up and continue to move forward. But we need you to show up and be the best version of yourself. We need that. Oh, definitely. And that can be difficult in a society that champions people who do stuff for themselves, by themselves, for themselves. Right, so, right. Like we, so we, we champion people who 
do stuff on their own for themselves. Mm. And to hear that a lot of our purpose and our gifts are supposed to be ways of helping others, that's actually countercultural. Right. So what would you say to someone who says, how in the world does helping others in turn help me live out my purpose? Mm. Well, here's the thing. The question I, I, or, or the thing that I would pose to them is that because somebody lived out their purpose, you're where you're at today. Right. Something as practical as the cell phone. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, oh, that didn't just come out of thin air. I remember when we didn't have these kind of iPhones. I remember when we had the dial up phones. I remember AOL. I remember those things. You know what I mean? I remember that. It's like I'm young enough to remember some stuff, but I'm old enough to remember a lot of other things that happened. Right. And these individuals lived out their purpose. They lived out their dream. They pursued these things. They stayed motivated. They were consistent. Right. They didn't allow adversity and challenges to stop them. And because of that, you have this thing that you now take for granted. Right. So for me, it's, it's realizing that, again, somebody is connected to you. Somebody's building something that you're going to need. You need to do the same in return. I remember, I don't know if it was Muhammad Ali. Was it Muhammad? It might have been Muhammad Ali that was saying, um, I'm, I'm going to butcher the, the quote, but he says something along the lines of like, the way we pay our rent on this earth is through service to others. Something like that. And it's like, yo, you need to to cover your ground too. Like you need to serve others as well. Nobody is self-made despite what we say, despite what the agenda is, despite what you see on social media, no one is self-made. We all need somebody and we all need some help. Mm, that's really important because here's another thing that I see, especially with motivation. A lot of people are using motivation as a way to get them pumped up and energized to buy things, to get a new car, to get a brand new house, to get new shoes, to get the newest iPhone that come up, that Apple Watch. Shoot, they got Apple Watches that are over $1,000 now. And like people are using that as their motivation to get up every morning. How is using your motivation to go after superficial things almost like a, a trap? Oh, for sure. Yeah, it's, it's definitely a trap and it's it's fleeting, like it's depleting. And you re you'll realize this, too. You'll never have enough. You'll never have enough for the people that are like, I'm trying to get these cars. I'm trying to get the jewelry. I'm trying to get the stuff. Right. You'll realize that there's no fulfillment with it. I remember getting like the stuff that I wanted back in the day, like the nicest Jordans and this. And I'm like, oh, I can't wait till I'm about to. And then I get them and it's just like, I don't feel that much different. Like they are dope. I am going to wear them. You know what I mean? But it, I don't feel any different. And I got to continue to try to fill that void with more stuff. And there's so many people out there that are chasing the dollar, that are chasing things, right? Because there's a void there that takes some true hard work. And they don't want to sit still long enough to actually do that work. They don't want to address the issues. I'd rather just go and do some shop therapy, right? I'd rather just go get some things. I'd rather look like I'm out here thriving and killing it and healthy. But inside at one, two, three o'clock in the morning, I'm in my bed crying and stressed out. But when you see me on the gram, when you see me in person, I'm be fly. So your perception of me is something else. But the reality is I don't even see myself how you see me. So I think a lot of times <clears throat> people are caught in this cycle of just like, yo, if I get one more thing, if I get another dollar, if my comma go up again, it's like, no, 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 no. You need to find fulfillment now so you can actually enjoy this stuff. I'm not telling people not to get nice stuff. My wife loves nice stuff, but it's not the stuff that makes her. It's not the stuff that, that makes me attracted to her. If we never had the stuff, it wouldn't even matter. But we get the stuff. We like the stuff. Let's be honest. I like nice things too, right? But when that becomes the thing that I'm trying to use to fulfill this void, it's never going to be enough. And you mm. have to feel whole. You have to feel fulfilled. And then, like I said, you can enjoy that stuff. You can enjoy the trip. You can enjoy the luxuries of life. But we got it backwards. We're chasing the low hanging fruit instead of chasing the fulfillment of life. Right. Instead mm. of, oh, instead of doing the work to heal. So many people out here just hurting, 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 hurting. I'm talking childhood trauma, relationship trauma, all different types of things. Relationships done fell apart. Maybe they were cheated on. Maybe they were abused. And they're trying to fill these voids, man. And you really have to do that hard work.
I really hope people moving forward, especially in 2023, that y'all will start doing that hard work. This stuff is always going to be there. They're always going to have Louis. It's always going to be Gucci. There's always going to be cars. It don't like you can get this stuff whenever you want. But the longer you wait to do the hard work, the more you're going to suffer. And you're going to have to continue to try to put on the face and continue to put on the mask. And we all know that that's not really you. See, and what's crazy is and sticking with misplaced motivation, I'm seeing a lot of people's motivation for being in relationships is tied to a superficial thing. Like, mm -hmm. I have not seen so many people care about matching pajamas ever in life. And that I don't even think it and I don't even think it's because they genuinely want to be with somebody. They just want the experience of what everybody else is going to say. Oh, y'all look so cute to get the attention that comes from it. Like pajama sales have gone up crazy this past year because yeah. people have started making it a status symbol and people are now motivated to run out and get matching pajamas because they see other people doing it and yeah. not realizing that matching pajamas is not going to help you when y'all are trying to figure out your communication problems. At all. <laughs> matching pajamas are not going to work when you're trying to talk through finances, when you're mm -hmm. raising children. It don't matter how much y'all are matching. That mm -hmm. kind of stuff doesn't help. The motivation is in the wrong place. But if we put the motivation in relationship, going back to what you were saying, service to someone else, mm. being of service to your partner. Right. People don't get that part. You're hitting on a lot of stuff and it translates directly to relationships. When we talk about relationships, a lot of people are selfish and they're wondering why they're not motivated in their relationships is because it's superficial stuff that they're chasing. That's, That's superficial cool. things. Mm, yeah, you you, you oh, hit on a lot right there, man. I'm even thinking about um, the the whole idea of like couple goals and things like that. Like people, like you said, people are posting these things, right? And don't get it twisted. We got the match pajamas. My wife loves it. We actually wear our pajamas though. But you know what I mean? Like we gonna rock them <laughs> all winter. But it's one of those things where people are obsessed with the idea of looking like a power couple. People are obsessed with the idea. I know so many women who are obsessed with the idea of like, I need to get married. Not I need to be healthy. Not I need to be in a good relationship. Not that I need to be with somebody who will honor the vows. I need to get married. I need to have the entity. I need to have the celebration so you all can applaud me. And I remember before me and my wife got married last year, we were thinking and we were just talking, going through therapy and things like that. Um about the whole celebration part of it. Like, man, this ain't really for us. Like, you know, I don't need all of this, but we're going to have a good time. We're going to do this thing. The reality is I'm here to pro I'm here to express my love for you, but I'm also here to really take up these vows because after the celebration, it's like the work happens, right? I need to honor, you know, through sickness and through health. I need to honor these things. And a lot of times, like you said, it's superficial. And I want you to see that I'm married but a lot of people don't want to do the work in relationships because relationships are work. Something that um, our, our, our pastor said, he said, um, you have to wake up and choose each other every day. And I was like, dang, he's like, yeah, every day y'all have to choose each other. That's what makes this work. That's what makes this love. It's like it can't be forced. If you love somebody, you're choosing them. When they breath stink, when they're getting on your nerves, all of these different things. I'm waking up and choosing my wife every single day. Right. So I want people to really grasp the idea. Like, what are your motives behind these things? Are you trying to show us that you have this 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 amazing relationship or do you really have it? Right. What does it look like behind closed doors? Right. Is it just good for the photo and then everything after that is just terrible? Because I'd rather not have the photo. I'd rather not have the pajamas. I want the great marriage. I want to be able to sleep at night. Right? I want to be at peace in my home. So I want people to understand that it's work. It's not extremely hard work. I know people say that, but it is work. And if you're not willing to do the work, you need to question your motives on why you want to do and why you want to have certain things. Right. Right. So going back to the motivation piece. A lot of I, I've been doing some research on motivation. And one of the things that the research continues to say is that very few people can can uh, uh, can uh, 
bring it out of themselves naturally, manifest it. That's what I was trying. They can't. They can't just manifest motivation. the The average person can't. So, what would you say are some good sources of motivation? Where can some people get motivation from if they can't seem to muster it up themselves? Yeah, I mean, we're we're blessed to live in the technology age. So, you know, my go to is always YouTube. I have my favorite guys and, and women to listen to. Um, obviously, you know, Dr. Eric Thomas, my personal mentor, Jeremy Anderson, Enki Johnson. Um, I, th there's so many different. I love Lisa Nichols. So these are just resources you can grab a hold of. Um, I listen to them through videos, through podcasts. But then also um, for me as well a way that I like to stay motivated, a way that gets me motivating is getting out and getting around people who are actually doing some things that are actually building something, you know, maybe even similar to what I want to do. Now that can be challenging though, because if your heart's not in the right place, you can envy these individuals, right? So before you even do any of this, do a heart check, right? For me, I know years ago, I had to do a heart check because there was a little bit of envy from the insecurities that I had. But once I was able to get over that hurdle, it was like, yo, I love being around these individuals because they push me to be great. Right. So outside of just, you know, turning on YouTube and consuming that content, getting around individuals who are doing something, building something. Right. It can be school administrators. It can be somebody who owns a restaurant. It, it can be anybody, really. But if they're pursuing something and they're being resilient, you want to get around that kind of energy. And unless you want to be you want to be around those individuals and you want to get away from the individuals who are just complaining all the time about their circumstances. You don't want to be around those people because they will they will drain you, literally drain you. And they'll have you thinking like, man, you know, I'm complaining about mine, too. My circumstance. And it's like, no, 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 we're not doing that. You want to get around people who are doing it, being resourceful, growing, developing, get around that kind of energy to stay motivated if you can't get self-motivated. Right. You want to know who secretly motivates me? Who? C.T. Fletcher. Yo, I don't know what it is about C.T. C.T. <laughs> Fletcher back in the day. Listen, so, so those who have seen and met my dad, my dad is from California and oh, wow. he's really jacked, like bodybuilder. Wow. And so, so my dad used to be like hitting the iron and here comes this dude who's... <laughs> Saying all these crazy stuff like, yeah, get in there, lift the weights. I'm like, okay, I can do this. <laughs> listen, CT Fletcher is not for the weak hearted. If your feelings mm -hmm. get hurt, if you're if you if you're a little sensitive on your emotions, don't listen to him. Mm -hmm. But when I need to get up early in the morning and go to the gym, cut on CT, and that gets me. Like, I ain't got no motivation really in the morning to get up and go to the gym. But hearing his voice is like, oh man, he may. Come whoop my butt or something if I don't get up and go to this gym. <laughs> so that that's a little bit about me. Those who don't know who does Joe listen to for motivation? Of course, I listen to Eric Thomas, but I also listen to C.T. Fletcher. Yeah. So we're going to go ahead and transition into our last segment of the show, which is Flip the Script. Mm -hmm. And Flip the Script is the segment of the show where our guest provides a simple tool or strategy for how to deal with a certain situation or a challenge that we deal with or that we discussed in the episode. So Nate, you ready for your question? Yes, sir. Someone out there may be listening and may be extremely motivated these first two to three weeks of the new year. They're hitting their goals, they're staying consistent. But unfortunately, something may have happened, life may have happened, and they have felt, felt off from being consistent and moving towards their goal. What type of advice or suggestion do you have to someone who is trying to get back up on the horse again and continue on towards accomplishing their goals? Mm. Yeah, that's such a great question. Um, what I think of is that that external person, that external motivation. And what I mean by that is this. Who suffers or who struggles if you don't push through? You know, whether you have kids, a spouse, friends, mentees. Who suffers and who struggles if you continue to stay in the place that you're in and you don't push through the adversity or through that challenge? Because, again, like I said earlier, it's like we're all attached to somebody. In my case, you know, very practical. If I don't push through in 2023 with what I said I'm going to do, now my wife has to struggle and gets a lesser version of me. My child has to struggle and gets a lesser version of me. 
right? My community, my friends, my business, all of these things struggle if I don't continue to evolve and grow because everything in life has to evolve and grow. What happens is too many of us get stagnant. We stop growing and then hence we begin to die. So again, who struggles if you don't push through? I want you to take the, take the, take the thoughts off of yourself because it's so easy to quit on yourself. So easy. Like if I was just focused on Nate, I'm going to quit. I'm going to just be, just be blunt about it. I, I would quit. But because I know that things are so much greater than me, that generations are impacted by me, how I show up with my health, with my wellness, with my mental health, with my finances, with my business, with my mindset, all of these different things with my relationships, I'm going to continue to push forward because I don't want to let them down. Right. And then hopefully that gives me the motivation I need to continue to push forward. But a lot of times we're focused on how we feel and we have to get out of our feelings and realize people struggle and people suffer when we don't show up authentically and we don't show up giving 100 percent every day. It doesn't mean you won't fail. It don't mean it doesn't mean you won't have challenges and hit brick walls and not want to quit. That's normal. You're human. But. In order for things to move forward, in order for other people to be blessed as well as yourself, you have to push through. So take the mindset off of yourself, stay out of your feelings about things and move forward. I promise it does get better. And there you have it, Nate. Thank you for joining us this week. Appreciate you for having me. So let everybody know where they can find you on the Internet and social media. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you can find me pretty much anywhere on all the social platforms at Nate Evans Jr. Uh, my website is also nateevansjr.com. Same for YouTube. All right. And I'll have all of his all of his information down in the show notes. I just want to thank everybody for joining us this week. Please head on over to iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, Stitcher, Podcast, comment, rate, subscribe. If you're on podcast lane, go ahead and head on over to the YouTube channel at Love Unscripted HD, where you can find the full video for this podcast episode. Also, don't forget, Wake Up and Love is here, the number one relationship community where you can get access to licensed therapists and certified relation coaches every single day of the week so that you can be the best version of yourself in your relationships. And so you or you could take your own current relationship to the next level. Hey, we may not have all the answers, but we will have the conversation. I'll see you all next time. Peace.